Hi everybody, um, today we are going to be looking at variation um, or differences in living things um, and I thought I'd start with this. Um, in the picture below are a set of identical twins. Um, I'd like you to come up with a, a quick list and it can just be a side-by-side -side table on one side different, on the other side identical and try and come up with as many different things as you can think of that belong on one side of that table. So in what ways are the twin, will these two twins be identical? But perhaps more importantly, in what ways will they be different? So have a go at that now, please. So here are some of the things that I came up with. Um, ways in which these two twins would be identical would be their, their DNA, um, their sex, their blood group, whether they have dimples or not. And in fact, anything that is affected by their genetics only by what they inherit from their parents what is passed on to them in the egg and the sperm cell because remember each of the egg, the egg and the sperm cell both contain 50 percent of your dna or of the dna of the next living thing and um, and so whatever is passed on in that dna should show up in you or at least a lot of it will do Things that would be different between these two identical twins, the three most common ones would be um, if they have any scars, if they have any piercings, and if they have any tattoos. In other words, anything that is affected by their environment. So as I said earlier, today in one of our last lessons for genes, we will be looking at variation, which is the scientific name for differences, as I mentioned earlier. And we need to be able to look at the causes of differences in living things so that you can recall the different types of variation and to describe the causes of the different types of variation and to explain how for a lot of features, a lot of variation that's shown within humans and in other species for that matter, is actually caused by a combination of different factors. So what is variation different species have different characteristics to each other so for example rabbits generally have very big ears and mice tend to have very small ears even when you take into account their size rabbits and mice's ears are very different in size however they're two different species Within the same species, we also get variation, even if it's not always as clear. And one of the examples I always think of when we talk about this um, is dogs. Dogs are one species, and yet there are massive differences within um, dogs. And um, variation isn't always really really clear so for example if we compared an Irish wolfhound and a chihuahua they are very very different and they show a lot of variation despite both being dogs but the variation isn't always that obvious for example um, with the picture at the bottom I've got here on the left we have a husky on the right we have a malmute they are different breeds of dog they're both the same species they are a dog but those two look very, very similar, despite showing quite a bit of variation. So essentially, variation means differences, either within one species, so you will get variation between one dog and another, like I said, um, for example, between a Chihuahua and an Irish Wolfhound, as I mentioned earlier, or between different species. So, for example, there is variation between cats and dogs. Variation generally has two causes. And as a result, we, we group it into in at least two different ways. There is inherited variation or genetic variation. This is variation that is caused by the genes that we inherit from our parents, the small sections of DNA that we inherit from our parents. Um, we have no control over these things. We inherit massive amounts of DNA from each of our parents and not all 
of the, the genes that that DNA is organized into show up in us. Um, but it can explain why you can share features with family members. I have the same color eyes as my mum, for example. Um, the other main group is environmental variation. This is how choices that we've made, our environment or our lifestyle have affected something about us. So on screen here in red, we have nine ways in which humans can vary between each other. So nine types of variation. I'd like you to organize them into three groups for me. First group is gonna be things or variation that is caused by genetics only. Things about you or another human that are only decided by your DNA that your environment would have no effect on at all. Your second group is gonna be things that you are decided only by your environment. In other words, things that your genetics, the DNA you inherit from your parents, has no effect on. And the final group is going to be things or types of variation that are affected by both your genetics and your environment. So I would pause here and I'd like you to order these um, nine um, types of variation in red into three groups. And I'll give you a hint. Each group is going to have three things in. So try that now and unpause the video when you're ready to go through the answers. So if you got to this point, you should have organized those nine types of variation into three groups of three. So let us go through them and we'll go through them in the order they're on the screen. So three types of variation caused by genetics only, by your DNA that you inherited from your parents only. Blood type is one. Your environment has no effect on that at all. Your natural eye color and whether or not you have dimples. All three of those things decided by the DNA that you inherit from your parents. Next then, three things that are caused by the environment only, meaning your genetics, your DNA has no effect on them. Scars is one. You do not inherit scars. You get them as a result of some traumatic injury to your body. Tattoos are another. You could have two parents who are the most heavily tattooed people in the world. You're still not going to be born with any. It doesn't work that way. You have to have been tattooed yourself. And as a result, we class that as environmental only. And lastly, piercings. Again, you could have two parents who have hundreds of piercings each. You won't be born with any. So that leaves us three that belong in the both column. So these last three are things that are affected by both your genetics and by the, your environments. So weight is one. Yes, there can be genetic factors that affect your weight, but your lifestyle plays just as big a part, if not a bigger part in deciding your weight. Your height is similar. Although you have inherited factors that are going to affect your height, um, your lifestyle plays a big part in deciding that. And finally, your natural hair colour. Um, the reason that I've put natural hair colour in the both column is, obviously, you can dye your hair and things like that. However, if you choose not to dye your hair, but you spend a lot of time out in the sun, for example, particularly in strong or intense sunlight, your hair will naturally lighten in colour. So although your natural hair colour generally is decided by your genetics, your environment can play a big part in deciding it too. So here is the first exam question I'd like you to have a go at today. This one's worth two marks, so you should try and make two points. James and John, as shown here, are identical twins. This means they have inherited the same genes from their parents. This diagram shows some of their characteristics. James is 150 centimetres tall. John has a scar. James and John both have blue eyes. John's body mass is 60 kilograms. As the diagram shows, John is taller. Um, and as the description shows, John is also heavier than James. But they both have the same colour eyes. Explain how this is possible. So pause here 
have a go at that, that question for me now. So if you've got to this point, you should have tried this exam question already. If you haven't, go back. Otherwise, let's go through our answers. So John is taller and heavier than James, but they have the same colour eyes. Explain how this is possible. Well, for one mark, you, you, must, you should have mentioned that eye colour is only controlled by genetics or is inherited. And because both boys got the same DNA, they have the same eye colour. And for the second mark, weight and height are affected by both genes and environmental factors as well. Just because two boys are identical and, and share the same genetics as each other, environmental factors, they will have been exposed to different ones and it could have affected them differently. Now, when we look at variation um, within a species, we can divide it into two different groups. Um, continuous variation and discontinuous variation. Um, and they're shown by these little graph, um, these diagrams on the right here. At the top, we have continuous variation being shown. And at the bottom, we have discontinuous variation being shown. Now, these two groups can be used to show features controlled by your genetics only, your environment only, or both. So discontinuous and continuous are separate from genetics, environmental, both. They're, they're a different way of organising things or variation. So let us start with continuous variation. Um, things, when we're trying to decide if something shows continuous or discontinuous variation, and um, we know it's continuous variation if the feature can have almost any value um, between a maximum and a minimum. So on my graph here, what I've got is um, a graph to show the height of 14 year olds. And we have a minimum height because we would have the smallest 14 year old. And we would have the maximum height, which would be the tallest 14 year old that we measured. Between that minimum and maximum, however, a 14 year old can have any height at all. So our shortest 14 year old could be 120 centimetres tall. The next smallest could be 121 centimetres or they could be 120.5 or they could be 120.1. As it mentions in the little label on the graph and um, the categories aren't distinct meaning that there's no gaps between the bars we don't suddenly have to jump from 120 to 140. Someone can have any value between the minimum and the maximum if we are looking at continuous variation. And the cause of this variation can be genetic or environmental, as I've said previously. It doesn't matter. Next up, we have discontinuous variation, which I think some, a lot of the time people find a little easier. With discontinuous variation, whatever feature it is that you're looking at, the cause that um, we're seeing is different um, within a species, it's discontinuous variation if it can only go into certain groups. So for example, blood group. If we decided to investigate this and we looked at everyone in your year's blood group, there are only a certain number of groups you can go into. Unlike with height, where you could have any height at all between a minimum and a maximum, with blood group, you'd belong to a certain group. Um, another one would be eye colour. If we decided to measure everyone's eye colour in your year group, you would belong to either blue, green, brown, hazel, etc. We couldn't have anyone just picking a random eye colour because they don't exist. When we are looking at um, discontinuous variation, um, these are generally only um, types of variation caused by genetics. So another exam question for you to try. We've got a group of pupils here who've recorded some different characteristics of pupils in their class, and we have a table showing their results. Question A right down at the bottom says, 
Oliver concluded that boys do not have green eyes after carrying out this investigation. Explain why his conclusion isn't justified. Explain meaning, explain why what he has on the table does not support that. And then question B, using what we've just looked at, name two continuous variables that were measured in their table. So pause here and have a go at this now, please. So if you've got to this point, you should have tried these exam questions already. If not, please pause and go back. Um, but if you have done, wonderful, we can go through them. Oliver concluded that boys do not have green eyes. Explain why his conclusion is not justified. Well, plainly and simply, he's only tested a small number of people. Two, four, six, eight. He's only tested ten people, um, of which only four were boys. So for him to make a blanket statement based on 10 results and only 40% of those were actually relevant to what he's talking about that isn't justified in order to make a comment like that you would have had to test a massive number of people I suppose really you'd have had to test every male on earth and then question being named two continuous variables in their table well there's actually more than two there's height in centimeters and um, mass in kilograms, hand span in centimetres, and arm span in centimetres. They are all continuous variables because they could take any value between the lowest and the highest value. So if you've picked any two of those, well done. Right, a tougher question about an inherited variation then. This diagram shows two families. Family A and family B. Some of the people in the diagram have freckles. And um, to know if somebody has freckles using the key at the bottom, they will have little dots on them. So, for example, Mary in family B has freckles, Pam has freckles, and David has freckles. All of the other people who are shown on here, so John, Bob and Emily, Rachel and Bill, they do not have freckles. The children, Richard, Penny, Simon, Becca and Katie, we don't know if they have freckles or not. I'd like you to answer these questions for me, please. So pause here and have a go at this now. If you're at this point in the video, you should have had a go at answering these questions already. If you haven't, pause your video until you have had a go because we're going to go through the answers. So looking at this diagram, which children are most likely to have freckles? I would suggest it's going to be Becca and Katie, and I would suggest right. Question B, how did you decide on this? Well, both of their parents had freckles. If both of their parents had freckles, there is a high probability that they will have freckles. Question C, why does Bill not have freckles? Um, best answer, because neither of his parents had freckles, meaning that the genes or the DNA for freckles was less likely to be passed on. Question D, which two cells are the things that pass on genetic information or DNA from parents to their children? Or which two things are combined to make a child? It's egg and sperm cells. And in question E, in which organs are these cells made? Well, the egg or ovum is made in the ovary and the sperm cells are made in the testes or the testicles. Finally, our very last thing today, as with each of our other lessons, please head over to Century Tech. And um, there is a lesson that is linked to this one that has a lot of different questions that hopefully you will feel more confident answering after you've completed this lesson. And it should have the same title as this, so you should find it nice and easy.